Hello, welcome to this uh, binary exploit. Uh, in this video, we're going to be solving WTF from Tonable.kr. This challenge is in the, uh, can't see it very well, but it's in the grotesque section. So second from last. Um, however, it is only worth 100 points. And so I decided to do this challenge because of the low point value, I think it had to be easy, right? So, uh, I don't understand why my exploit is not working. I need your help. So this is not as cringy as some of the other uh, other statements we've seen. Um, but we have two download links here. One is probably, one is for the uh, binary, uh, which I've already opened up in IDA for analysis here. And the other one is a Python. Um, Python script that uh, that we can take a look at in the browser here. And of course, we have the option to connect to that there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Python uh, script here. So we have, um, we have kind of a main thing going on here, uh, print. So shall we play a game? Hey, I'm a noob in this prone thing. I'm stuck with a very easy buff task, so buffer overflow task called WTF. I think this is quite easy task. However, my exploit payload is not working. I don't know why. I want you to help me out here. Please check out the binary and give me payload. Let me try to pwn this with yours. Sincerely yours, noob. And then we have a payload, request for a payload here, it looks like. Uh, okay, so we get input and we decode, decode in hex. So from this, I'm assuming that you have to encode in hex. In other words, you have to type out the hex values for all of the bytes that you want to send in, which I guess, mm, which I guess kind of makes it easier in a way, but I don't know. You see, this is in a try except block, and if uh, it's not in the hex form, then we have to, we get an error message, and then. Thanks, let me try if your payload works. And then we pwn it with, or we, or we try to pwn with that payload. Pwn here looks like it opens a, uh, a pro sub process um, with WTF. So that's presumably the binary that we have downloaded. Uh, and then we have, uh, we have, we write the payload that was just sent down here after it was decoded. And then we, return the output and then looks like down here if there's no output in other words if the length of the result was zero then your payload sucks i thought you were expert what a shame uh, but then otherwise hey your payload got me this i admit you are indeed an expert so i'm assuming that something is displayed if we get something and we get to view that. So, of course, let's go ahead and look at the binary to get a better idea of what's going on. So here it is in Ida Pro. Um, and we, looking at the left-hand side here in the function window, we have three functions that are probably worth looking at. Main, win here. Win, uh, looks like it just calls system and then cat flag. So this is probably what we want to call because uh, it will cat the flag and then we get that result right back. Let's go ahead and write the address because we know this is going to be a buffer overflow exploit. So it's probably a good idea to write down the address of this. And in fact, to save time, I have already done that right here. And I've also noted that it is 64 bit, uh, which means that whenever we do our overflow, we'll have to make sure to pad this accordingly. Okay, so in main, let's look at real quick what's, what's going on here. We have a call to scanf. Scanf is called with the uh, format string percent %d, which just reads in a integer, decimal integer, and it reads it in to, or the value of the decimal is read to the address rbp plus var4. Then rbp plus var4 is compared with 32, which is 20 in hex. 
And in the case that it is less than or equal to, we follow the screen arrow down here, uh, just bypassing this here. Otherwise, we have a um, we have a call to puts on preventing buffer overflow and then uh, move of 32 into. So essentially what this is saying is that if this if the value we put in is less than 32, or sorry, is greater than 32, then it's capped out at 32. Otherwise, it's safe. Uh, and then we continue on uh, down here, and it looks like we call my if gets with uh, RDI containing the value of or containing the address var thirty. Var thirty is not used before, uh, and uh, ESI here contains ETX, which was loaded here and here, and we have this is actually comes from RB people's var four which as you may recall was the thing that was read in and compared and checked and all that stuff. So we call my gets with those two parameters. Let's go check out my gets. The value at ESI which was the which was that integer value that we read in is placed at 18 or sorry, is placed at 1c, the CSI. RDI is the uh, is that thing that wasn't used before it was the plus of our 30 and let's see what happens next so we have a comparison of rb people's var 1c that int with zero clearly unless we put in zero it's not going to be equal to and we have a situation here set if not zero al and then if we look further down with instructions that include al we have here that it tests al and so essentially what this is doing is it's comparing with zero and if it's not zero then it sets al and if it's still if it's not zero uh, this test will allow for this conditional branch here if it's not zero then we go over here if it is zero then we go over here over here it looks like i'm not sure what's going on in this node probably just color it like black or something uh we have uh, a jump to this this, which looks like an exit, which looks like an ex, which looks like an exit procedure. Bah. So uh, over here, we have RBP plus buff moved into RAX, and then we have a call to read here with the buffer at that RBP plus buff. Buff here is negative five. Quite interesting uh, choice for an offset, but the number of bytes here is one, so it reads one byte into that minus five. So this appears to be safe. Call descriptor is zero, which refers to standard in. And after that, we have move uh, the byte with zero sign extension of RB people's buff into AX compared the uh, byte with zero A, which as you may know is the character for new line. Uh, and then if, if it is equal to zero A, we have exit. Not sure why this is here either. We can just color it black, um, but in other, uh, if it is not equal to zero a, then we have movement into eax of this value, which was initialized to zero up here, interestingly, and then we add that to the uh, the this value that was passed in. I believe it was rbp plus var thirty in main passed in as var eighteen here, uh, and those are added. This is added to that, and then the value at the buffer that we just read in there is moved into that pointer, that resulting pointer of that plus that, then this value is added, incremented, and then we loop, do this loop again. So it's safe to conjecture here that this is an index into the buffer that actually starts at rbp plus var 18, which actually comes from main at rbp plus var 30 right here. Okay. So that's kind of convoluted. Uh, doesn't seem to be anything wrong, really. It seems to just do its job here. I'll, I'll, I'll be very efficient, uh, inefficiently, but anyways. Okay, and we already took a look at Vim. We just saw that nothing really, uh, nothing really, it's not, there's nothing complicated about it, but it's never called in main or F gets, so we have to, we have to construct a, our overflow has to be able to redirect the pointer to uh, Vim. So how are we going to do this? What we can do 
is take a look at the try to find a vulnerability in here and the first vulnerability that i see well not the first but the only one that i can think of since my f gets seem to be fine actually uh is lies in main and it come and it happens here we have a comparison of ax with 20h and then we have a jump if less than or equal to jump if less than or equal to is a signed instruction in the x86 uh, instruction set as you can see here in other words if our value is uh, if we enter negative one then jump if less than or equal to will still run even though in memory our value is something like hex f f f f f f f f and so on so it's a huge value but we still pass and inside of my f gets this it's treated more or less it is treated as an unsigned value because all it does is it sub subtracts by one it decrements decrementing from f f f f f f f f f f f and so on will just produce f f f f f f f f f f f f and so on uh, with the last uh, nibble of e so essentially this whole overflow check is bogus it doesn't work because if we put in a negative number then we don't have to worry about that uh, and again we can turn we can always terminate by adding a new line so it's not like we have to keep uh, writing stuff so with this in mind we can go ahead and construct what we're going to do but before we do that uh yeah so let's go ahead and do that we can open okay so as you can see i've already downloaded wtf and what i'm going to do is just since we know what our strategy our buffer is at esp plus x30 in main but we know that our return or esp minus x30 return address is going to be at EBP uh, plus the word size. In this, in the 64-bit architecture, it's 8. So we're looking for EBP plus hex 8. And as you can see, the difference between those is hex 38. So what we'll begin by doing is sending in a negative 1. Actually, before we do this, let's just go ahead and run and see what happens. All right, so we seem to be... In the F gets, we can just put negative one there. And now we're reading, right? So let's go ahead and read a bunch of A's. And we get a seg fault. So this is exactly what we want. Because this shows that we've overwritten our return pointer. Um, so let's go ahead and construct a Python. Uh, a file here just to read from. So print, uh, we're going to overflow first. So can overflow just by using a uh, and we need 38 of those oh actually no we have to send in the size there first uh, plus 38 times a and then oh and then finally we have to add our address which was f f40540 and make sure to add a new line at the end and we will put that into some other file like wtf um, txt okay and now let's run wtf with that and it doesn't look like we got um we got what we wanted because we should have seen at least a a call to the bin cat flag but then this leads us to go back to look at our code and we can see here that there's a scanf here, uh, this uh, read format string. And it turns out that if we look at the page for set bbuff actually from last time, we can see that there are different types of buffering and the default value for buffering is, is fully buffer. So standard in, this includes standard in, it's fully buffer. Full buffering, if we read this, is um, on output, data is written once, the buffer is full, or it gets flushed. On input, the buffer is filled when an input operation is requested, and the buffer is empty. 
So this is the key item here. The actually, so when we call f or scan f here, uh, the input operation is requested. But when we call read later on in my skits, when we call read, the buffer or the buffer may not contain any useful data. So what we have to do is make sure that we kind of reset that buffer, uh, kind of fill it up and drain it out, cause it to automatically flush. But to do that, we have to know how big the buffer actually is. And we can do that by looking at the Linux page for pipe. So pipe shows us that the Linux versions before 2.6.11, I'm clearly using a Linux version that's beyond that, but it should be fine. Uh, the capacity of a pipe was the same as the system page size, which is four kilobytes. So we'll try to use four kilobytes. What we're going to do is after the F gets, we're going to add a bunch of other characters. We're gonna add a bunch of characters to fill up the buffer or to fill up the pipe buffer. And what this should do is kind of reset it so that whenever read is called, we actually read stuff instead of getting random garbage. And just to see what, that this is the case, we can do a quick run of GDB on this. And let's disassemble my FGITs. Oops. Uh, and let's break at uh, this. Uh, let's break after we've read and moved into EAX. So in this case, it's here. So let's run it with uh, that. And we can see that what we've read is F7, which is not at all exactly what we wanted. If we continue, we still read F7. We can keep on continuing F7. What we wanted is a bunch of A's that we put in here. So clearly this will not do the job. So to fix this problem, what we've got to do again is to fill up that buffer, let uh, that pipe buffer. So what we do is, so even before this, we have to add um, let's just add something. Let's just add the no byte. Doesn't really matter. And then, oops. And this is multiplied by, and the size of the buffer we're assuming is four kilobytes. Four kilobytes, uh, and we already have written one characters, two characters, one, two, and the new line, which is three. So to fill it up, we just need four o nine three more characters. We should fill up the buffer. And okay. And again, if you want to view your text file without getting a blob of text and uninterpretable symbols, you can use the convenient hex dump utility. Uh, And we can see here what's going on. So we have 3, 1, 2D. This is, you know, the ASCII. Uh, 2D is negative, one, negative sign, 3, 1 is 1. So negative 1. And then we have a new line and a bunch of zeros. And it looks like at address 1000 hex, which is 4 kilobytes, we have we just have these A's and then we have the looks like this is the address here and then we have new lines so this looks good so let's run this and see if this works again this works so we got the bin cat flag no such file or directory which indicates to us that uh, the overflow worked correctly and if, uh, if we want to see the mechanism of this in GDB and how it deferred from the previous one, we can again run this and break there. So this is after this is after the first read and we see we get an A just as we expected. We can continue uh, 32 times. Oh, oh, okay, so we went too far. Oh, no, we didn't. Uh, we're looking for hex 38. Yeah, so probably 50. Okay, 
There we go. Okay, so we've read 38 is 56. So, yeah, see, now we have read F4, O5, 40, and we should get a bunch of no bytes after this. Great. Okay, so we've seen that that works, and now let's turn this into something that we can actually use to get the flag from the server. So what we do now is go ahead and make a script. So vim, a Python script, um, let's call it, okay. And of course, we'll import the clean, oh. So remember, the values are expected to be hex encoded, which means we can actually just send in a string with the hex digits uh, instead of figuring out how to represent these byte values and then pack them and all this stuff. So we can directly do it. But we will go ahead and set up a remote uh, to Ponyball. And the port, I believe, is at... Uh, 9015, okay, and we will get the value, so receive until, okay, receive until, but to do that, we let's actually run it and see what happens first. Uh, we can go ahead and get that value from here, payload please, so we can just go ahead, yeah, and use this. There's no need to go, oops, call and trash this shortcuts. Okay, so, and then what we're going to do is just send, send, send line. I believe send line adds a new line after it, uh, so maybe we won't have to add it. But we will have to add it because, um, yeah, we have to add an additional one because, actually, I don't know. Oh, no, 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 that won't happen. We have to still add uh, a new line inside uh, to initiate, to, because that is, that is the exact payload passed to the thing. Yeah, so let's go ahead and make this. So remember, uh, negative, that's 2D, 3-1. So that's negative one, and then we have a new line. New line is zero A, and then okay. So after that, we have four thousand ninety three times of some garbage. So let's just say zero. It doesn't really matter. And then we have thirty eight. Yeah, that was fifty six uh, times. What was it? Thirty ones. Uh, yeah, just thirty one. Or no, forty ones. And then we want the final addresses in little Indian four zero five three zero three zero three zero three zero three zero three zero okay and then we have to make sure we add a new line after this so that's the zero a actually to make this a little bit more readable I will add zero a separately and then we will actually let's not do that let's just print whatever else R has to say receive all all right, great. Let's run this and see what happens. Oh. Aha, thanks. Let me try if your payload works. Hey, your payload got me this. I hate libsy buffering shit, lol. New line, new line, new line. I admit you are indeed an expert. So that is our flag right there. And we can copy it in um, to get the flag. So that was uh, quite an interesting uh, exploit. It is a little bit long for what it is, a uh, 100 point exploit. But uh, hopefully uh, it made clear what's going on inside uh, this. It's buffering also the x86 um, sign versus sign is a huge thing uh, that will cause a lot of errors, especially if you use your own functions that you customize. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. Don't want this to lag too, uh, to drag on too long. Next time we'll be solving some more from Ponable. Uh, so stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.